Uh, hi lads, uh, welcome back to the channel. This is uh, the first part of a, a multi-part series on the uh, Wingnut Wings um, F1 Camel. You might well have seen a, a video I put up a little while ago about whether you'd like to see it or not. Uh, well, you know, overwhelmingly <laughs> people want to suffer through it. So here we go. Just have a look at the um, the instructions. I did mention that they're a bit on the initial view they can be a little bit complicated but once you actually start getting into it it's um, they're not too bad at all. They're very good really as you can see there you get a nice colour call out to see uh, so you can see what actual thing it's supposed to look like the the cockpit that is. Lots of um, variations so you've got to make it a choice um, early doors um, and here as well it, it took me ages to find these uh, little hole I had to drill out uh, for the for, for the for the um, for the for the engine breather tube I believe but anyway uh, once you get stuck into them um, it's not too bad I mean this is just what you see here um, this is just like the initial pieces cut off sprues it's just cockpit only this isn't even I think it's probably three quarters of the pieces uh, for the cockpit that I cut off of the sprues. They all want painting before we do before we do anything. So you're really right. You're in it straight away. Um, no messing. So it, it, it's quite intense. I've got to say. Uh, but all the parts are beautifully molded, as you'd imagine. It's a few injector pins, which I was surprised about. Um, the seat's very nice. Replacement seat's available, probably better than that one, but it's it's good enough for me. Uh, yeah, the injector pins, there's a few. Um, as we go through the build, you see that you'll see them popping out all over the place. Um, but to be honest with you, um, you don't see them. So you could spend um, a good evening, a good, a good day almost, depending on what uh, filly you use. Uh, filling them and, and sanding them out um, you take your choices really um, if you're not going to see them for me personally I can't I can't see the point of wasting time you just you know, need to get stuck into it so the very first job to do was to drill <laughs> was to drill out a couple of holes in the fuselage uh, oops um, I do need a proper drill bits these are cheap old things I got off eBay I think um, they're pretty they're pretty grim. Um, I do need to invest in some proper drills and and stuff. These are a couple of uh, inject pins that I thought we would. They might be pretty visible. Um, actually, as it as it turns out, I don't think they they were. Uh, as you can see, as I alluded to earlier, straight into paint. Um, this is all going to be pretty self-explanatory. That's a black gloss, the GX100, I believe it is. It's very nice. Lacquer goes off well within minutes uh, the usual um, extreme metal for the, the aluminium for the metal colors this type of thing you've seen all before uh, that is a fuel tank you know brave, brave pilot sat on top of the fuel tank almost um, we've gone with the white primer this is the um, mr. servicer mr. finishing servicer I can get get my words out of white um, if we've gone with this one, um, black would be too too dark. Uh, um, I think I'm going to prime the whole model um, with the white. <laughs> For me, First World War subjects, aircraft, need to be pretty clean. Um, I, I, you know, I, you know this. You know, weathering of, of aircraft is great, but for me, not for World. World War One aircraft. I don't think they were around long enough. So this is a bit of uh, wood um, effect we're going to use. The MRP do a range of wood colours. Now I did a bit of a splurge a couple of months ago. Got a bonus from work or something, and I bought a load. I haven't used them. So this is more than anything. I'm just trying them out. Um, all different colours of wood we've got here. We've got the first one with the pear wood. This is ochre wood. As you can see that this is for a darker wood this is more like this is the the um the framing for the cockpit 
whereas the previous wood was like a pie would be like a pine or like a like a ply color this is a bit darker this is almost like um i don't know to be honest with you i don't know what woods they would have used um the middle stone this is about the closest i've got to uh, like a basket color to be honest with you you don't need all these fancy paints tamia tamia buff um and deck tan it was perfectly good enough really you can see i'm um, what i'm doing here what i'm using here is is an oil color which we're just literally just gonna um slap on as you can see just slapping it around this is where doing the wood effect is really a quite a good and interesting um technique because you can you can almost have whatever color you want using different oil colors uh different base colors i mean if you really wanted to get into it you could you could you know really go to town but you just got to make you know take your choices make your choices and and, and just stick with it that, that's what i would call like the like a pine or the um almost like a ply color so it's quite a light uh wood color this is the darker color for the framing we we'll use the uh the abtalung uh um wash brown this is the only abtalung oil color i've got and they are superior to the Windsor and Newton um, oils, I've got to say, there's no bits in it. There's no, they're just rich, dry, quick as well. They're excellent. Uh, obviously, this is the instrument panel. We're doing the same thing here, just slapping it on, and then um, we leave it. I leave it for probably uh, not too long, really, uh, probably an hour or so, and then we come back in later on. Uh, here we go. Um, with a brush and then just literally drawing it down in the direction of where the grain would be uh, and you really the base color is the actual the grain so it's a bit like reverse masking um, so you're actually you're dragging the oil color away to leave you the actual grain of the wood now the magic this is the magic if you are going to do this you really do need to get some um, some clear colors no matter what they are as long as they as long as they're the clears and then again you can experiment and go to town as as much as like the yellow is for the uh the, what the ply of the pine color and then the orange would be for the darker um framing of the cockpit you could use if you wanted a real dark like a mahogany color then you go with red simple as that easy and the added advantage of using the um the clear colors um would be that it gives you it it because they're gloss as well it gives you like a gloss um finish as well which is which is ideal which is protects it all if you have the lacquers obviously that would go off in no time so um i haven't got lacquer clears i've got um aqueous so they take a little bit longer to um sort themselves out here we go we're using um the mr color um uh metals here the metal colors just for a bit of detail painting uh, they're quite nice i was going to use i've got some citadels oh, i can't say it citadels i can't even say that now oh, good grief it's been a long week the citadel colors i was going to use but now i thought i'd give these so i'll try these and and i'm glad i did because they're nicely lacquer color they're lacquer paint so they they flow nicely nice and thin I could try and buff these up, but obviously they're so small, it, it, it's barely worth it. Uh, coming in to paint the dials with some, um, I think this is uh, Vallejo uh, semi-gloss black. Um, any black would have done, of course. You can see it's a bit of a fiddle work, a bit fiddly. Especially with my dodgy old, um, dodgy old eyes and dodgy old um, uh, paint brushes. Now I have already deckled these. I didn't show it because it was is a little bit hard to film. But that's what it looks like. 
deckled up. And now I'm putting using um, uh, UV um, uh, curing a clear resin pen, you know the sort of thing, uh, to uh, make up for the lenses. I actually thought this had um, spilled all over the, all over the place. I'd used it for a little while. I came to use it, and it was oozing out at the end. And I thought, oh no, it's all gone off. But luckily, it was okay. And obviously, the, using the UV light there just to um, um, cure the um, the resin. It's a real good uh, good thing for you, for the stack for the tool stash. That look at that. That's lovely. That's gone off. I says hard as rock. Uh, we're coming on to now just. Um, fixing some cockpit bits together now wash brown again uh, this is the Abdelung um, oil just to put a wash on the uh, fuel tank there I'm trying to use just the one uh, wash um, so it, the color kind of all ties in together a little bit um, for the most part, I, I did that. Um, I did use some Citadel um, Agrax Earth, I think, and some non oil. Now, I don't show that. I kind of did it off camera just as a bit of an experiment for myself. And um, yeah, it came out okay. Uh, I'd say I, I didn't film it, I didn't show it, but uh, you have to take my word for it every model uh, you should you should experiment or try a different technique even if it's a tiny little thing because it's all well and good doing it on um, uh, mule kits or this is just buffing up some of the um, metal color dark iron it's all well and good using it on uh, bits of card or mules but when you're actually doing it live that's when you get to see a to see if it's um, a technique you can use for me personally these are the um, machine guns going on to the I think that's an oil cooler or oil tank right across right next to the machine guns oh dear I'm just painting some uh, the leather on the top of the, um, the basket there uh, Vallejo leather colour nothing special uh, PE um, seatbelt just um, burnishing that down uh, prior to painting did that on the other on the other belt on the on the left hand side prime them with um, or prime them with black I think or and then painted them up in a, in a, in a like a buff color now here I'm rigging up the internal framing um, actually I thought it would be daunting because um, I haven't done any proper rigging for a long time but do it on the blind side um, absolutely fine there you go look looks all right doesn't it not too bad at all so here we've got a bit more assembly now we're actually gonna have to start putting things together <laughs> I'm almost like a, over a week into this build and this is the first time almost I've got the glue out. But there you go, this is um, this is a Great War aircraft modelling. <laughs> uh, we've got to be careful not to spill the glue all over the place. But you can see the uh, the it's all how it's all going to look. Of course, the big on the horizon. What I've got to worry about is getting the fuselage together, which would be fine. And I've got to mask all this off for um, for spraying up. So it's all a bit rickety at the minute. Um, you know, it's all over the place, really. Uh, but obviously, I need to get the the other side in, which we did here. And now I'm putting in the um, the control wires off the yoke and the and the foot pedals. The only way I thought I could do it was thread it, thread them through with the with the cocktail stick with a bit of uh, white tack, and then super gluing them in and that's the best I could do uh, I did that eight times count them <laughs> we're almost coming to the end of this uh, part one I go to thread it through a little um, it's brilliantly manufactured this um, kit 
about threading it through there, lovely. And then super gluing all on the blind side, you're never going to see this, so you can be as rough as you like, really. So coming to the end of this, um, usual old thing, if you like it, uh, please give us a sub and a like if you fancy it. You know, it just helps people find it. It helps the channel, makes it help me grow it a little bit, keeps everybody interested. So there you go. So there it is. And then we snip the end off there with them. Um, pair of scissors. Try not to damage anything. <laughs> so there you go, chaps. Uh, chapesses. Um, the next part you'll see will be up to, possibly not including, but up to primer. But I'll leave it with you now, some pictures, and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>